or two or three got in his name, he'll be in the midst. And, and I feel his presence today, and I appreciate the obedience of each and every one. And, but I need you to understand something before I get into it, that, 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 that there's an unction and there's an anointing and a calling of the Holy Ghost. And each and every time we come into a service, it's important that each and every one get in tune with that. Amen. Okay, no, I'm just, I don't mean to correct, I'm just telling you the truth. But it's important that we get in tune with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And there's a time to speak and there's a time to listen among each and every one of us. And as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm a learning that, Sharon. I'm learning that there's times to preach, yeah. right? There's a time to, there's a time for each and every one of you in this place to share what God put on your heart. But I need you to know that there is an order. Yes, there sir. is an order yes, in which the Lord wants to uh, do each and every time you come into the house of God, right? So I want to challenge all of you to be in tune with the Holy Ghost, right, to be in tune with the Holy Spirit Amen. as to when it is. Just don't talk to talk. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you, just don't speak to speak. Speak when God has called you to do that Amen. and has given you the unction in your spirit Amen. to do that. Amen. I just want to share that up front. <laughs> but I appreciate the Lord and I appreciate what he's been a minister uh, to me uh, through this past week. And in case y'all didn't know, Jan, I'm a farmer now. I know. Y'all, you knew. You knew. Jan, y'all have heard that before. But I appreciate the chance that I can go out to the barn and, and just kind of... Uh, Clean up the, 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 if I just say it like this, clean up the cow crap. Yeah. Uh, and, and just be me and the steer and God. Uh, and allow him to speak and allow him to minister. And I've been thinking about the, uh, the, the, the Christmas story. And I just need to say this, that there would there be no Christmas without Christ. Yeah. Amen. I don't want you calling it happy holidays or season greetings or all that nonsense. It's Merry Christmas yeah. with a capital C H R I S T. Yeah. It's Merry Christmas. There be no Christmas. Listen, I believe Paul said this. He said, "Thanks be to God for the indescribable Amen. gift." Amen. Hey, you've got a gift Amen. today. You might be opening up presents tonight or tomorrow, but the greatest gift was given some two thousand years ago Amen. when the Lord came and yeah. the Holy Ghost put Jesus Christ inside of Mary's. Amen. That was the greatest gift. Yeah. That you'll ever, yeah. ever receive. Yeah. It's Merry Christmas. But I got yeah. just something that's been kind of working in my spirit. And then I'm going to preach. I want to say this up front. That from the very beginning, Jay, they've tried to cancel Christ. From the very beginning. If you remember, there's a lot of story. There's a lot of people. You help me. There's a lot of characters in the Christmas story. The main one is Jesus. The main character in this Bible is Jesus. If you read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you don't find Jesus, I suggest rereading it because that's what it's all about. From the beginning to the end, he's the Alpha and he's the Omega. It's all about Jesus. But there's many characters along the way that the Lord uses to further the name of his son, Jesus. And I think about one in particular. There was a king during that time by the name of Herod. And what Herod was is he was a political powerhouse, right? He listened. He wanted all the power. He wanted all the glory. He was the king, and he didn't want anybody else coming and messing with his kingdom. And he got word that there was this baby that was born to be what? King of the Jews, yeah. right? And he wasn't looking at things from a spiritualized carol. He was looking at it in the physical. He was looking at it in the carnal. And he thought, my goodness, how could somebody come up? I, I can't have somebody coming and be the king because I'm the king. And he got all high and mighty. He wanted to be the king. You suppose there's times in our lives that we try to be king of our lives? Oh, huh? Uh, before we start looking at him and saying all these negative things, sometimes we ought to take a look at ourselves. Uh, there's times that we try to be king and the queen of our own lives, and that's not how this works. You see, his desire is to be king of kings and lord of lords yeah. for you and in you. Yes. Amen. But Herod said there were three wise men that came to Jerusalem.
that were looking for the king. And so just by uh, a process of elimination, they thought, well, we'll probably find him in Jerusalem. But that's not where he was. Because huh? that's not what the scripture said would happen. That's not what the prophecy said would happen. And so he came and, and Herod says this. He said, when you go and find him, come back and tell me so I can worship him too. Uh, he said, so I can worship him too. Yeah. And how many knows he was lying? How many knows that he was being deceitful? How many knows he was being deceptive? Just like, hear what I'm saying, just like some of the people in power today. Be careful what you buy into. Be careful who you listen to. Listen, they'll use the name of Jesus just for their own political gain. Be careful. And so the Bible says that the wise men went and they found the baby. They, they found Jesus and they brought him gold and frankincense and myrrh. And they says they gave him gifts. And they worshipped him. And then by a dream, they were told, don't go back to Herod. Yeah, right. Don't go back to Herod. And then by a dream, Joseph was told, Sharon, take that, take that boy and take his mama. Go into Egypt. Yeah. Don't go back into Jerusalem until Herod dies, John. Yeah. Herod got word. And the Bible says he was angry. And you know what he did? He sent out a decree that every child, Grandma, that was two years old and younger was to be put to death. What was he trying to do? He was trying to cancel the Lord from the very beginning. Huh? But I need you to know you can't cancel Christ. That's what he put in my heart. <laughs> you can't cancel Jesus Christ. I don't care how hard they try. You can't cancel. Listen, you can't cancel Christmas. Huh? COVID may have come a few years ago and everybody couldn't get together or whatever that nonsense was. But here's the deal. You couldn't cancel Christmas because you can't cancel Jesus. His name is the name above all names. Listen, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And his word is forever settled in heaven. And I'm telling you right now, as hard as they might be able to try, you can't cancel Christ. God's got a plan. You go a little bit further and you'll see the Pharisees tried to cancel him. Yep. They tried to. They hung him on a cross. How many knows for three days they thought they had it won? Uh, the enemy thought he had it won. But on that third day, Jesus Christ rose victoriously from the grave. Yeah. Resurrected. Set at the right end of the Father today and forevermore. I need you to know you can't cancel Christ. The Sanhedrin tried to cancel him. You remember when they brought Peter and John up and said, you can't be talking about this. You can't be doing this. Jesus had already ascended into heaven. Peter looks right at him and says, listen, would it be better for me to please God or to please man? We can't help but to see you, to say what we have seen and what we have heard. They wasn't going to let him cancel I don't care what the government tells you. I don't care what your family tells you. I don't care what the world tells you. Don't let them cancel Christ in your life. You can't cancel Christ. I don't care what kind of cancel culture that we live in. Oh, that's, uh, that hurts my feelings. Let's just turn it off. That's offensive. Let's just turn it off. Cancel it all. And they're trying to do it. They're trying to cancel the Christian. They're trying to cancel Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you right now, what the enemy means for evil, God means for good. And Ron, they can't do it. They can't do it. If Jesus Christ is alive and well in your heart, if he's alive, if the Holy Spirit is upon you, they can't cancel nothing. Amen. All right. Now I'll preach what he gave me. I like I just never I'm not even I'm going to say it like this I am not surprised at how this went because I shouldn't be surprised about how God works right and oftentimes we kind of get that way and it's okay to be in awe and wonder of God but don't don't you know don't misunderstand what I'm saying but I like it how he brings things all in order when we don't have to put it on a bulletin or we don't have to have this, 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 or this, but I like how he brings it all together. And so 
I was praying and, and just kind of trying to read through this uh, Christmas story and, and just let the Lord speak to me a little bit. And, and he did. And I want to read these verses first. That way I don't, don't get out of order here. Take a look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And I want to start with 13. And I ain't going to try and read a whole lot, but we're going to have to read here for context. Chapter 1, start with verse 13. It says, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Amen. And Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, yeah. and am sent to speak unto thee, to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be, a, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Now do me a favor and just slip on just a page or two to verse 57 of the same chapter. It says, Now Elizabeth's full time came, and she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son, and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zechariah, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, yeah. but he shall be called John. Yeah. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to the father. Listen to this. They made signs to Zechariah how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote saying, his name is John. And they marveled all. Look at 64. And his mouth was open immediately and his tongue loose. And he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round them, and all these things were noised abroad, voiced abroad throughout all the country of Judea. And all that they had heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied saying, and you can read down through the rest. Father, I just want to listen to you. Just need you to lead this. God, I know the word you've given me. I pray, Lord, that you just help me. God, I pray for your anointing. God, I pray, Lord, for your words, God. Just come down and touch my tongue, Lord, and I pray that your very word would come out. I pray for each and every one, Lord, here today. God, I pray that we would receive, Lord, yeah. and understand what it is you have for us this Christmas season. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. So I read a little bit there because I wanted to make sure we, we understood the full context. But this is what happened. The angel of the Lord, Gabriel, came to Zechariah. And Zechariah, as we read, the Bible says that he was older in age, and they both were barren. Now Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. They were related. Did you know that? They were related. And, and 
The Bible says that this angel came to Zechariah and said, you're going to have a child. And Zechariah had some doubt. And Zechariah had some questions. And Zechariah, I don't want to say that he was disobedient, but he was not gathering what it was that the angel of the Lord was saying to him. And it says, so you're going to lose your voice. Yep. <laughs> he says, you're going to lose your voice because you doubted what the word of the Lord was saying. I need you to know something that when we doubt the word of the Lord or we reject the word of the Lord, but you know who the word is. Jesus Christ is Amen. the word. When we reject him or we doubt him, we lose our voice. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Now, here's the deal. You might be able to say you can hear. You know, I'm not saying you'll physically lose your voice, but you lose your influence. You lose your impact. You lose your ability yeah. to do what it is that God has called you to do. And uh, listen to me. The Pharisees, they would stand on the street corners and it said they would spew these or spew these big prayers out and they called it vain repetition. Huh? Vain repetition. They'd be speaking it, but ain't nobody hearing it. Yeah. There was no power behind it. There was no authority yeah. behind it. There was no drawing power behind it. Amen. They were just talking to talk. Yep. Right. Amen. And they had no influence. And they had no power. But I'm here to tell you that when the word of the Lord is on the inside and you obey what it is that thus saith the Lord, then your words do have power. Your words do have authority. Listen, you can call things or not as though they were. Why? Because Jesus Christ is living inside of you. And so they said, you're going to be quiet. Sometimes the Lord's got to hush us up. Right here. Prime example. Sometimes he's just got to hush me up. And sometimes I won't listen. He'll have to take measures to hush me up. When I'm out of line, I need hushed up. When you're out of line, you need hushed up. The Bible says that he went mute. Couldn't talk. And the time came when Elizabeth become full term. And the baby was born. And Butchie still couldn't talk. He still couldn't talk yet. And he said, we well, think we'll just call him Zechariah. But Elizabeth piped up. Elizabeth had a voice. Yeah, she did. Yes. Yeah. She piped up. She said, nope. We're going to call him John. Yeah. We're going to call him John. And he said, but there's nobody in your family that's been called John. You see, names were very, very important back then. Right? They would follow the lineage, the genealogy. There was always a, a, a symbolism behind the name. And they said, we better check and see what Zechariah has to say about this. We better go talk to the dad. We better go talk to the man. Then the man, that story, the woman had the voice. Yeah, we'll go there just for a second. Just for a second. We somehow along the lines have, have got this crazy doctrine that within the church yeah. or within the home yeah. that only the man has the voice. It's by no mistake yeah. that the Lord prompted this man to ask my wife to stand up here and lead the service today. When she told me that, it confirmed the word in my heart. Yeah. Hey, it gave her a voice. huh? Yeah. And for too long, we just hushed the woman up. Yeah. I need you to know this, ladies. You've got a calling. You've got the word of the Lord inside of you. You've got a voice. And we want to hear from it. Amen. If it's from God, I want to hear it. Yes. I'd rather you from, from the Spirit of God than some man stand up just clanging cymbal. Yep. About I hear that. Yep. Paul said this, that if you have not love, you can speak in a thousand tongues. Yep. But if you have not love, yep. you're like a clanging cymbal. Yep. We got enough clangers. We need some lovers. Yeah. Huh? Amen. We need some lovers of God. Amen, you love God, you've got a voice. I don't care if you're male or female. Yep. That's right. Amen. 
And so they said, we better check what dad said. He said, give me something to write with. And he wrote down. It wasn't. Listen to this, John Deb. It wasn't. Well, maybe we ought to call him John. Or what do you think, BJ, about calling him John? It was his name is John. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know why his name was John? Because the Lord said his name was to be John. I need you to hear what I'm about ready to say. Listen, the moment that Zechariah became obedient to the word of the Lord, (laughs) he got his voice back. The Bible says that his tongue was loose. And he started praising God yeah. and giving God glory. Yeah. And he prophesied about it. I need yeah. you to know that obedience to the word of God, you, you're obedient. You've got a voice. Yeah. And now more than ever, we need the child of God to speak up and start using their voice yeah. to give God glory yeah. for all the things that he's done. Yeah. I don't care if they're trying to hush us. I don't care if they're saying, take him here or that. You've got the Lord. You better be using your voice to yeah. tell people about yeah. it. Obedience unlocked his voice. This is what he told me to tell you. Find your voice. Find your voice. So, yeah. Some of you, some of you have been hushed. Yeah. And you're listening to voices. <laughs> voices in your families, voices in where from all over saying that listen. You can't say that or you can't do that. You don't look the part or you don't act the part or that's not proper or that's not all these religious rules that people try to make, man-made rules. You're not following any of them. Some of you have been hushed. And I believe that this morning the Lord is telling you, just be obedient to me. Find your voice. You've got a voice. Let everything that have breath Praise the Lord. Yeah. Think about this. The Bible says this, that John the Baptist, huh? John the Baptist, Zechariah and Elizabeth's son, when he said, his name is John, he was able to speak. He not only unlocked his voice, but he also unlocked his son's voice. Yeah, that's right, buddy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Did you hear what I said? Because of his obedience, he prepared them the way for his son. Now, what did Jesus say? What did the prophecy say that John the Baptist said he'd be a voice in the wilderness saying what? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. He was a voice in the wilderness. Why was it? Daddy got it figured out. He obeyed the word of the Lord, unlocked his voice. No doubt John the Baptist had heard that. His voice was unlocked too. And I hear the beautiful thing that when Jesus Christ comes into your heart, John said this. They said, is there you the Messiah? He said, no, no, no. There's one that's a coming after me. Yeah. Listen, I'm not baptizing water, but there's one that's coming after me that I'll baptize in fire and with the Holy yeah. Ghost. Yeah. Listen, whose shoes I'm not even worthy to untie. Yeah. I need you to know Jesus, boy, he had a voice. Huh? He had the final say. He yeah. still has the final say. And when he's in your heart, you too have a voice. Yeah, yeah. he's in, buddy. Mary, the most unlikely, most unlikely, a teenage girl who no doubt was looked down upon, who in society at that point, she shouldn't have quote unquote had a voice. But the Lord came unto her and she said, first she's like, who am I? Who am I? Maybe maybe you've been there. Maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe you're at that place to say, who am I to be a voice for God? The Lord gave Mary a voice. Huh? Put the Son of God right inside of herself. Oh, and what confidence that I can imagine. Everything ties together. Jay testified. I was over here laughing. Jay testified on turning the water into wine. Mary, I believe what you believe. Mary was very confident at that point in her son. 
She knew that she knew that she might have been a teenage boy or teenage girl when the Holy Ghost came upon her and when the angel said, you're going to give birth to Jesus. But she grew up just like Jesus grew up. And I believe the Mary then that said, according to thy word, I believe at that time her obedience continued to grow and grow and her faith grew and her Amen. courage grew Amen. and her yep. boldness grew. Amen. And that's where we need to be, church. We need to be in a place where we continue to grow more and more and more and in boldness and in courage and in faith. Listen, and she, when that happened, when that happened, she knew exactly what the Lord Jesus, her baby boy, was going to do without a shadow of a doubt. I need you to know something. We can learn something from Mary because we know without a shadow of a doubt what our Lord and Savior can do. She used her voice. You ought to be using yours. You've seen him do some miraculous things. We've seen him do some things among us right here that ought to be going out there. We ought to be telling the world, listen, it's not about Santa Claus. It's not about presents. It's not about the government, the president. It's about Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you right now, we have got to use our voice. Find your voice. I think about I think about Peter. Peter. Oftentimes I can be a little bit like him. You probably can too, with just being honest. He'd talk out of turn. Huh? <laughs> He'd talk out of turn. Yeah. And sometimes and sometimes that'd get him in trouble. It would. That'd get him in trouble. And sometimes it gets me in trouble. But I need you to know something. As time went on, and we know he denied Christ three times, and we know that if you want to call it reinstated, whatever the word might be, we know that the Lord came back and Peter repented of that. You talk about a fellow that found his voice. He just turned in the book of Acts. He found found his voice. And it didn't matter. You know what it says about he and John? It says that the people... That was a looking on and listening. Kind of started scuttling among themselves and said, these were the people that were with Jesus. That's what it says. These are the people that were with Jesus. Oh, if people look at you, is that what they're saying about your life? By the things that are coming out of your mouth? How are you using your voice? Are they saying, that person's been with Jesus? That'd be the greatest compliment that you could ever have if they just say it did with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they got a nice house. Oh, they got a nice car. Oh, they got this. They got that. Big whoop de doo. That's all going to burn up. Every bit of it. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Let him say that that person has been. With Jesus. Amen. Find your voice. If I could go back into the Old Testament just for a second. I need you to understand that the Old Testament is just as valuable as the New. It is. This is the full gospel, Genesis to Revelation. And everything in it, the Old Testament Pointed to Jesus. The old, or the New Testament points back to Jesus. Everything points to Jesus. Amen. And so there was this lady in the Old Testament. Her name was Esther. And Esther was chosen by God to become the queen. As the Bible says, for such a time. As this. See, what was happening is, and I'm going to paraphrase, but what was happening is there was this plot, plot to destroy the Jews. Right. I believe the old fellow's name was Haman, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Haman was trying to peel off the Jews, an entire nation of people. 
I mean, just as we look around our world today, does it not seem like we've got groups of people Absolutely. trying to take other people out? Absolutely. Just take a look at Israel. And in some regards around the world, take a look at what they're doing to the Christian. Absolutely. Yeah. They want to take us out. And you say, we live in America. I understand we live in America. But I'm telling you, you could wake up tomorrow and we could be facing the same thing. That's why we got to find our voice. But Esther was put in to become queen to save the Jewish people. You see, Esther was elevated and she found her voice. Yeah. Yeah, she found her voice. And because of her obedience, because of her saying yes to the calling that was put on her life, she was able. She was able to save the people. You've got a voice. And it's oh. You'll only find your voice when you stop and listen for his. Amen. When we just take a moment, I hear you. Jesus said that he was the good shepherd. He said the sheep mm-hmm. will know his voice. You see, you'll find your voice when you stop and listen to his and become obedient to what it is that he's called you to do. You say, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know the things that I've thought. If he can take the Apostle Paul, Mm -hmm. huh? if he can change the life of the Apostle Paul, who was using his voice to help murder Christians, and just by a conversation on the road to Damascus, his heart was flipped. Oh, when he started using his voice to proclaim the goodness of God. Yeah. If he can do that for him, he can do it for you. Mary. Mary. Wasn't quite sure what she was getting into. But she said, at thy word. She said, I'm your servant and at thy word, let it be so. Is that where you're at this morning? Is that the place that you're in this morning that maybe you won't understand everything? Maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense. But at thy word, let it be done. And if that's where your heart is at, and if we can get to that place where we humble ourselves, oh, you'll have a voice. And God will give you a platform. Yes, he will. And he'll give you an opportunity. He'll give you an influence to use that voice. But if you're going to stop and you're going to be like Zechariah was to start, kind of doubt, kind of think, I don't know about all of this. You might be talking, but you ain't saying anything worthwhile. Right. (laughs) This morning, I can't help but think that there's people in the house. And maybe that resonates with you. Maybe that just sits right down where, that just gets right where you live. Oh, I feel like I got no voice. People's trying to hush you. You're trying, listen, you're trying to be who God wants you to be, but everybody around you is just trying to hush you up. Everyone around you is just trying to to tear you down. Or the things that are happening around you just seems to be contrary to what thus saith the word of God. I want to encourage you this morning. All you got to do is be obedient to his word. Take his word. 
David said, I've hidden thy word in my heart that I might not sin against All you've got to do is be obedient and you'll have a voice. James 4.10 says this, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Maybe there's one here this morning. What better time than on Christmas Eve? Uh, The day before we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior. Oh, it's something you could remember for the rest of your life. There'd be no forgetting that Christmas of 2023, I came to know who the Lord was. Maybe you're here this morning and that's you saying, I just don't know. I'm not 100% sure. You're talking about finding your voice. I just need to find him. Well, I want to tell you something. He's here. Yes, he He's is. very present. Yes, he is. Oh, and when you find him, you'll find your voice. Yeah. Amen. Maybe it seems like you're just spinning in circles and your words and you're trying and you're trying and your words to your friends and your words at school or at work or whatever it might be just are bouncing back at you. That's because you've not truly found your voice. You find Jesus Christ, you'll find your voice. Yeah. Amen, amen. I believe this with everything in me that every person, I don't know how many is here, but every one of you, deep down inside, you have a desire to make a difference. I know that. It is in there. And the only way that you can make a, a difference for all eternity is by filling a void in your heart with amen. Jesus Christ. You've tried to, somebody in the place, you're trying to fill the void with things of this world. I don't know if it's alcohol. I don't know if it's drugs. I don't know if it's it's, uh, uh, pleasure. I don't know if it's material things. I don't know what it might be, but you've tried to fill the void with something other than Jesus Christ. And you might have a voice among those group of people that aren't following the Lord, but I'm telling you, those are that's not an yeah, that's not an eternal voice. That is a carnal, temporary voice. And one day you'll stand before God and you're not going to be able to use your voice, I don't believe. I believe you're just going to be awestruck as God stands and as you stand in front of God. And he looks at you and he says, is your name written in my book? And he'll look through it. And if he finds your name, he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. But if he looks through the book, just for the record, he knows if your name's in it or not. As he looks through it and he doesn't find it. He said, depart from me. I know not who you are. Yeah, that's right. And you'll be cast into a lake of fire for all eternity. I don't come to scare you this morning, but I come to tell you the truth. Amen. I come to tell you the reality. That's right. I come to tell you that there's a God in heaven that loves you. That wants to give you a voice. Yes. Wants to give you. He said that the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. He wants to give you all kinds of good things. He wants to give you influence. He wants to give you a true voice that your words will be the very word of God, which is for which will last for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Reed's going to find us a song. I got just one more I want to share. Because I believe that these things that the Lord has put on our hearts this morning, speaking to different people, because we're all at different places. Some of us might have been like Mary, insignificant in our own mind, unworthy, which we all are unworthy. But the least likely, maybe we feel that way, but God came and gave her a voice. Some of us might be like Zechariah who who just had a little bit of doubt. 
who just wasn't quite sure. But oh my goodness, when he was obedient, he had a voice. Some of us might be here and don't have a relationship yet to even know what this voice is all about. But maybe, maybe some of us here are like the crowd of people during what they call the triumphal entry. As Jesus came riding in in a donkey, I mean, as he was born in a humble manger and he was riding in on the trial front on a donkey. You see, it was just a humble life that he lived. But they were all shouting, glory to God in the highest peace on earth. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. <laughs> and the Pharisees spoke to Jesus and said, hey, we got to hush up. Jesus said this. He said, listen, if they be kept quiet, even the stones will shout. Yeah. Yeah. But that same group of people, just about five days later, some of the very ones that were saying, Hosanna, 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 were yelling, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Because they bought in to what the religious people said, they bought into what the government said, and their voices were shut off. Child of God, hear my warning. You buy into what the Word of God says, mm-hmm. not what man says. Mm-hmm. Not what anyone's trying to push upon you. I don't care if you've grown up in a church all your life and this is just the way they've always done things. Maybe they're doing them wrong. Religion is wrong. I don't care what political party you uh, buy into. I need you to know that all these politicians, I don't believe any of them do it right. Stop buying in. To what people say and start buying in to what the word of God says. Find your voice. As we stand this morning, we're going to open up this altar. And if the Lord is moving on your heart like I believe he is on some people, I'm going to ask you to come. If maybe you've been hushed and you've been quieted, I need you to come to this altar and you'll find your voice. Maybe you're here and you're not 100% sure that you're on your way to heaven. I'm going to ask you to come and find your voice. Maybe you're here and you've bought into what everybody else is saying, all that hogwash. I'm going to ask you to come and find your voice. As we sing this morning, this altar is open.